everything in, in a little the road and we got this other device what's the, the other device that we got richie that once the shit goes through it it's pretty much already a mix some shit like that what's i'm just I'm, the, the shit that we got the the switcher thing what's the name of the switcher thing oh the switcher the black magic yeah the black magic so <laughs> it makes our life a whole lot easier i didn't even know we had that shit you don't know nothing <laughs> <laughs> ladies and I'll gentlemen like boys the- and girls <laughs> Children of all ages, if you've been smoking rock or under a rock, you now tuned into the motherfucking personal party podcast. Chip. I did oh. that. I did that almost like a sneeze. I ain't gonna hold you. <laughs> <laughs> that shit yo, sounded like a sneeze. Yo, dude. stat. I don't know if you're familiar, but he has the wackest ad lib in podcast history. I don't know who he you stole it from. And I'm proud of that shit. Okay. <laughs> I don't know who he stole it from don't or what's what. But the shit's so annoying, it bothers me every time. Anyway, I have one of my brothers in the building tonight. You know what I mean? As I make my rounds, you know what I mean? I had to, I had to get the identity of my podcast right. Right. Before I started to have certain people in here, you know what I mean? And I said, you know, we built this podcast around culture and around my friends. I, I was going to say that. I see you know? the list of who's been through here so far. And it's, it's all the it's circle. All, it's all the circle. You know what I mean? So I feel like our story is so much of our stories to be told that everybody can have a part two because it's yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah. You know what I mean? And our, our chemistry alone. But anyway, I have a DJ's DJ, a producer's producer, mm. right? Coming from Boston, Mass., However, a long Lawrence, time ago. Man. However, a long time ago. <laughs> All over, man. All over. But I came to New York City almost 18 years ago. Oh, you're so a New you, Yorker. You're, you're, oh, a, New Yorker. you're a New Yorker. My, my That's what I was getting to. Yeah, so you're a New Yorker. I was you're getting to. You know what I mean? You was born over there. You, you know what I mean? You, you put, you're a legend over there. I still I won't. You're I still, still won't put on a Yankee side. It will never happen. You still, yeah, why, um, yo, now, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. However, you know what I mean? I have a DJ's DJ, producer's producer. Was born in Boston, but he's actually a New Yorker. Even though he won't wear Yankee fitted, but one day he will. He's a mass hole, but he's still you. You're in the home of the Yankees. Also, one of my favorite producers and favorite DJs to work with. Um, I had the the privilege and honor on being on multiple shows and tours around the world with you. Some fun times. Some very very fun times. Many many fun times. I have the great. Static selecting this motherfucker. Shit. What's good, man? Happy to be here. I haven't done a podcast in a long time by choice because it's everybody got a podcast. Mm. I ain't trying to do everybody's podcast. You, I'm trying you, to do the ones I like. See Selector. now, <laughs> see now that that makes that makes me feel great. You know what I mean? You want to do the ones you like. You fuck with my shit. That's good. That that's that's what we need. And I feel like it's a role reversal because usually I come sit with you on at my serious, radio show, yeah. at, on your radio show, and you're sitting in this seat. And I'm over there. Yeah, yeah. And now I get to do the interviewing. So it's, 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 it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful position for me to be in. Yes, sir. But um, shit, man, we got a lot to discuss. Now, I said you're my favorite DJ's DJ. And I say that because you're somebody that actually collects records. You care about the craft. Absolutely. When did you get into DJing? DJing, I, I would even say before I had turntables because I used to sit there with cassette singles and pretend I was on the radio. Like, I'd do talk breaks and all that when I was, like, 11, 12 years old and just be like, you know, I'd make up a radio station name and be like, next up, new single from Bahamadia or the next <laughs> group home or whatever. <laughs> and, um, you know, that turned into actually being on the radio by the time I was 13. Uh, I might have been 14 when I started radio. 96. 13, 14. Yeah, so the way it worked, and it's funny because when I first started popping, everybody's like, oh, he's a rich kid that went to private school. Absolutely not. Phillips Academy was in the town. That my, so my parents broke up when I was 10 years old mm-hmm. and moved to New Hampshire, which is like right above Lawrence, Massachusetts. Right. And um, the school, Phillips Exeter's there, and John Forte was actually going there at the time. John he had a Forte. scholarship. Wow. So they had a radio station there. I was going to Exeter High School. I was in junior high when I started radio, but I was going to junior high school there. It's not, you know, that glitzy of a town. There's trailer mm-hmm. parks and, you know, it's whatever. But 
the academy's there, and that Mark Zuckerberg was going there at the time. Like the academy is like you hear these names. This is like every single kid that goes to Phillips <laughs> Academy ends up at Princeton or Harvard. It's like you're guaranteed you're good in life. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Like some really next level. But here's the deal: is they had a radio station, and they had to give four people from the local town a show every semester. So you had to write an essay, you had to like apply for it. And I started going to my man's show. And the next semester, I was like, nah, I'm signing up. And I got my own show when I was 14. Um, it was called Underground Butter. And it's funny because it was Thursday night. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was all high school kids. It was yeah. a private high school. So it was considered college radio to the industry because there's no such thing as high school radio. So we reported to CMJ and Gavin and all that. I was getting records in the mail and all that. Mm. So, you know, I started radio very, very early in life. And uh, it's it's just always been my, my passion. When when the mixtape game crumbled and all that, and back in 07, that's when I started doing albums. But doing Shade 45 kept that spark alive because every week my radio show became my mixtape. Right. You know? Like getting the exclusives off. I kept that passion the whole time, whereas everybody else had no outlet after that. You know? Like the internet took over, the blogs took over and all that, but I still was doing that on the radio and that just, you know, that, that special place in my heart. So I always do radio one form or another, but... 16 years, uh, 15 years strong on Shade 45 now. Oh, how Number long? one hip hop station in the world. Don't 15? get that messed up. Yeah. Holy shit. Years. So, so right after doing the mixtapes was when you got to, to Shade pretty much. No, nah, I was, I was on Shade during the, I started Shade in 05. So 16 oh, years, 16 years. Oh, yeah. wow. See, now that's, that's another thing I wanted to bring up the mixtape era. It's, it's many, it's many DJs that was a part of the mixtape era, but not many that's still relevant yeah. today. And you happen to be... A lot of be, jobs got canceled. A lot of jobs got canceled to the blocks. Yeah. How did you, you know, uh, navigate through that world after the mixtape world and finding your footing? I remember like it was two seconds ago. Mm. I seen the um, the news. I think it might have been on either MTV or a website or something. It was like, Drama and Ken and Arrested. These are my guys. That. Like I remember that. Those, these were my guys, man. They still are. Shout out to you know, that's family. But I remember seeing it and be like, it's over. Right now, it's over. Like it's over, over. The whole game. I was kind of waiting for it. Were you so, paranoid? Nah, not really. Cause I was getting away with murder too. Mm -hmm. Murder. I was putting my tapes on iTunes. Mm. Like I was wilding. Like other people's shit. I wasn't even <laughs> producing the shit yet. I was just putting people's shit on iTunes. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Um, but I called Clinton, I called Clinton Sparks because he was uh, he owned part of Mix Unit, which was the number one mixtape website. And I was like, "Yo, bro, like, what do you what are you gonna do?" And he's like, "What are you talking about?" I go, "Mix Unit." He goes, "What's that?" Like, hmm. he thought the feds were on the phone. They probably were. Like, literally, they were doing millions of dollars a year. And he was just like, "I don't know what you're talking about." And I was like, "All right, bro, I'll talk to you later." Like, that's how serious it was. It was like literally some mob shit when you call yeah. it, yo, I don't know, who are you talking about? I don't know who that is. Like, I knew that moment it was over and I was like, you know what? I got to start hitting that NPC harder and making beats and make my own album because if I don't do that, I'm going to be, you know, I'd still be doing radio and all that, but I had to take it. See, I didn't care about producing before that. Mm. I had my little AZ, my KRS-One, Foxy Brown. I had like placements, but I made beats like 1% of the time. I went from doing that to focusing on making beats after that and it was like, I got to, my career goals like instantly got I had to put my foot on the gas because that mixtape game was feeding a lot of people for sure done for sure, immediately for sure. One, like, like the picture game. a whole income stream just being like <laughs> it's different than just losing your job and be like yo I'm gonna go look for a new job right, I lost right, my job right. on Wall Street I'm gonna go work at this firm no bro it's like picture Wall Street disappearing and stocks not existing like this shit was crazy man nah I'm with you man that's like the government came and picked up everybody that cocaine bus, nigga. That mm. shit was just like it's that, like nigga. it's like that shit like that. Them stop make they they stop manufacturing baseballs exactly. and you're a baseball player. It's exactly. like it's over. It's over. And that was a pretty stressful thing, but I was never really worried because I was like, you know, I'm a I've been hustling my whole life, man. From I used to bring my family to water parks off selling lemonade. Like I I always hustled. My mom gave me that mm. trait, so. I wasn't worried, but I was like, damn, hip-hop's about to change forever, and it did. Mm, shout mm. out to Mom Duke. Yeah. Who, who gave you your first placement as far as producer goes? Producer um, my man Rex, man. Shout out to Ari KS. He, uh, I had a record on his album. He was on Landspeed. This is 2001, so I was 19 years old. 
That was the first time that I had something on a piece of wax that I produced. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. After that was KRS One and A Z. Hold on, hold on. What record did you produce for Foxy? No, no, no. Uh, too real with AZ featuring AZ. Oh, that's it was hard. on her Brooklyn Don Diva, and when oh, she got out of hard. prison, Bob Perry. I'm not even gonna start talking about that guy, but he put the album together while she was in prison on Koch. And when she got out, she said the one I did was the only song on the album that she liked. Like the rest of the album was like put together, and the record I did, AZ really came through and did his verse, and I remixed her verse because she was in prison, so I used the verse. But she loved that record, so that meant a lot. You just ran past KRS One though. Yeah, so. The thing is, I did the intro and outro, so it never really counted to me. Even though it's on his album, it just didn't count the same way. Y'all never worked together? Uh, we did a lot of shows, but nah, we know, I never... He was on my first album, yeah. Mm. Yeah. That did work. Huh. All right, cool. Right, so, so DJing, the mixtape era, producing, right? And then this internet yeah. era arrives. The internet made things a lot better and a lot a worse. A lot worse, yeah. right? So a lot of us had to adjust because even me as an MC, right? I was I was privileged to be a part of the mixtape era, right? But then once hip hop game and shit like that started to come about, and I had people like Mickey Fax that was in my circle that was already right. in that world, I didn't quite understand it at first, and it was a it took a lot. Even it was a culture shift because I felt like mixtapes went from the streets to Soho. Yeah. Mm. To that world, to where you had to, you had to understand that world to understand the internet. Uh, even before then, like, what was your challenges understanding the internet compared to you know mixtape shows, shit like that? I feel like I always had the, I was always ahead of the curve because I had, like, I remember my father was one of the first people to have internet in the whole, like, <laughs> his whole area. I remember downloading a, like, I download a picture of Red Man and Met the Man. On Yo MTV Raps on AOL, and it would take 25 minutes to download the picture. Facts. That's how 100%. long ago. Facts. So I always was on some hip hop shit on the internet, like from going on Sandbox and listening to 12 inch records before I bought them on there. And then, like, I watched the whole internet go from, you know, shit like uh, real hip hop to um, Sandbox to. Uh, What's it called? Um, hip hop site. Then hip hop game came along, and that's around the time the game. Ch- hip hop game was a hip-hop big shift. Hip hop game was the shift, but they couldn't keep up with it, and that's why they fell off. Like mm. that was a big shift. Hip hop game changed a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. They were the first site I seen post exclusives like a mixtape. Facts. And like people were ripping. I remember like certain DJs were ripping shit off their site and putting it on the mixtapes. That's crazy. I, was, I never did nothing like that, but that mm. was crazy when I started seeing that, and I was like, nah, it's all changing. You gotta embrace it though. Hmm. A lot of people, like even with the live streaming, me and Gibbs and Freeway were doing live albums in 2010. I was on that Gibbs album yeah. in 2010. Bro, we were so far ahead of the curve with that. Ustream. Yeah. This is the Ustream. What the fuck happened to Ustream? Uh, they, they didn't keep up. Live stream too, they didn't keep up. Huh. And now look at Twitch. It's like, that's just a, a souped up version of that. Mm-hmm. Huh. See, you was ahead of the game with, with actually doing a 24-hour album. After, when you Nobody told me you was doing that, I was way. like, you're insane. I don't know how the fuck you're going to do Me that. and Bun about to do part two. And I, yo, it's crazy. All the 24 out. Let me. Let's some air horns. Because every album. 24 album, any 24 album. Let's be clear, album took 24 hours. The Saigon one took 24 hours because oh, was was that was the first one I ever did. Okay. But what, we didn't have no streaming capability. So uh, no one. A lot of people didn't believe it, but it literally took like 23 hours. All the other projects were less than 12 hours. So I don't even want to yeah, use the it was word like 24 10, hours. Let's, let's say 10. The let's just say was a 11. work day. A work day. I, I was I was on a the, the Freddie joint that y'all did where we did make it warm for you. Mm-hmm. The Classic Chase, record. Chase Infinite. That's People crazy. We know. had Chase People Infinite rapping yeah. on that shit. Chase has been you know on a couple mean? projects. So so that that's crazy. And then I was on Trill Static, yep. which was amazing. And, and you left. And you I West Side took a walk somewhere. I don't know where y'all went. <laughs> and all of a sudden I'm like, yo, Fat Joe's here and he's getting on the song with you. And you were like, what? I didn't believe it. I was like, what? Because like, Fat Joe wasn't even invited, bro. He showed up. He was literally told me he was in bed watching us on YouTube and was like, nah, I'm getting out of bed. And he got dressed. Shout out to Feeb for connecting that. Word. And he came through, man. And I was so disappointed because there was another artist that flaked. There was one artist that flaked. And I was like, damn, man, who am I going to put on whatever... Bro, Fat Joe Fat. showed up wearing the hoodie with like he wasn't he was no D-I-T-C, jewelry. Fat he Joe. came through like yeah. you know Joey just crack. yeah man yeah. and he sat there and wrote that verse and everybody seen him write it too for all the I know through the years has been 
oh, pun, blah, blah, blah. Nah, man, we watched Joe write the verse, and it was incredible. That's a fact. Yeah. That's a fact. Joe is one of my favorites, so, you know, I was super excited. He's he's a hip-hop, he uh, what's the word? <coughs> he's like the... He's, he's, he's ambassador he's, of hip hop, yeah, man. Not real talk. He is so hip hop, bro, and he don't have to be. He got all the J Lo records, and all, he don't have to be like that. He's hmm. the most hip hop dude I've ever met. In my he life. from DITC, hmm. man. I mean, Joe had records since '92. Mm -hmm. And if you, you got a, <laughs> last night, I was talking about we were playing pool, and they were playing um, the D and D All Stars joint. And I was like, Joe would be at every session, just getting. Think about how random it is in '95 for him to be on. Uh, I shot you by LL, or to be on that D and D, or to be a. He was coming from a crew, but he just bullied his like the way he got on all these features so early, and it's 2021. He's still doing he's it. Still Come rocking. on, man. Do that, not talk about longevity and not mention Fat Joe. Nah, Word. he's the illest. Word. Now you know we we shifted for a minute. Yeah. But I want to get back to something. The whole hibachi style make an album in front of you. Now I make songs in front of my fans. Yeah. I call it hibachi. Because they so, can see me chefing so. up. You make projects in front of the world, hibachi style, yeah. with other MCs. Now, some artists are difficult as far as when you play certain beats for them, they, they're looking for certain pockets. Absolutely. You like to challenge us. Yeah. You'll play me shit where I'll be like, it's hot, but I don't want to do it. And you're like, no, bro, this, I'm telling you, just I'm telling you. <laughs> and then I do it, and I'm like, oh, no, nah, you was right. right. So you doing that live with an artist, you have to already... Study the artist yeah. to already know where you're going with Plus, shit. the DJ side kicks in, and it's like, that's what I want to be playing. Mm. I always like, if I start making records that I don't want to play on my radio show, I don't want to do this shit no more. That's mm. an advantage. Like, all the greatest producers were DJs Premier, Dr. Dre, Pete Rock, they're all DJs first. Facts. Even Q Tip DJs. Like, Facts. You know, that to me, that's the foundation of hip hop, so why wouldn't it be the foundation of producing hip hop, you know? Mm. Mm. What made you think about, you know, doing doing it live for the fans like i think just when you stream came out we were bugging out and i was like wait why don't we just make records on it and it was like let's do it and i went to xxl and they came through and we did it on their channel mm. and um man i wish i had all that footage bro they got like back then i think the, the the amount of space it took to save a live stream like i don't think they could do it so they didn't you couldn't download it after mm. i wish i had all that man who's your top five producers Cream, Q-Tip, Pete Rock, um, it changes a lot. Dilla and Alchemist. Mm. <laughs> Shout out That's to Alan the Chemist. Five. That's hard. That's a mean star. Five. That's a mean five. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> before, because I was going to get into the producer side of things. That was a good question, show. But right, anytime I hear a Static Selector project, is one person I know I'm for sure going to hear on it. Shout out to my brother Terminology. Shout Good dad, Terminology. Going, right? We let the air horn go for my dog. When did you meet Term? Term was a part of the whole mixtape era with you too. Like I remember, yeah. I remember Term from back then. Yep. From Source magazines and yeah, all that. Yeah, that's that so was, he's man, definitely. I not was new. going into this. Shout out to um Gotti who used to do the unsigned hype, and I was <sighs> going at him like, "Yo, shout listen to Term, new shit. Listen to this Term. These old rapping dudes. Listen." And you know it all. I would man, it, it's been a crazy ride. I met Term in '98. He was 16 years old, and I was DJing this club in uh, Hampton Beach, New Hampshire, right? Like, everybody from Lawrence, Lowell, Boston, they'd all, it was 21 and under. It was a kid's party. But it would be 500 people every Friday night, like, packed. And we were playing everything from the new Nas and Jay-Z to reggae to house music, like a little house music. Like, I'm, I'm talking about, like, soulful house, though. Like, the B-Boys and the house dancers, we were getting busy. And, um we do open mic at the end of every week at 1 a.m. we do open mic and Term would be there every week first one in line writing his name he used to have the you know Raiden from Mortal Kombat yeah. he used to have yeah. the Raiden hat on <laughs> <laughs> and he'd always be like I want to battle so and so I want to battle so and so I'd be like you're bugging bro and he'd always rap and I'd be like ah, oh, he, he, he cool like this is you know we're 16 years old and um, it turned into a thing where it was like I hit him up like Hey, what are you doing? Like, come over to my house. And, like, we'd let our moms talk, and I'd go sleep over his house. Or we were literally doing hip-hop sleepovers, listening to records. Term had a record collection, and he had an ASR. He had, like, all that. And he didn't make beats. He didn't. All he did was have all this to... <laughs> he just loved hip-hop that much. He, like, listened to 12-inch records, singles. He'd listen to them, then put on the next one. Like, I don't know many people that do that that ain't DJs. Like, he literally... 
he loved that shit and he studied it the same way I did. So we like had an instant bond off that. And then um, we didn't see each other for a couple years when I moved to Boston. And then um, he was working on some project, his first album, Out the Gate, which actually ended up being the first release on Show Off Records, my label. Five. I did the intro for it in 2003. And then um, I moved to New York, so I didn't really see him right away after that. And then he started coming to New York a lot, and that's when it kind of became... We kind of always had like a friendly competition. Huh. He'd be like, yo, I got a song with so-and-so. And I'd be like, yeah, check this out. I just got you on record with so-and-so. And then you know, I brought him to Preem and all that, and it just was history after that. But, man, what a ride. That's <laughs> fire, bro. Yeah. I love those stories. I love those stories because, you know, it's always good to hear about the journey when you see the finished product like yeah. seeing y'all for years just rocking just rocking you don't a lot of people don't know the lineage that y'all had yeah. to even build into that the relationship report and, so that's, you know that's something that brings everybody close together is being fucking broke together and trying to figure out how to get on you know this flight or make it downtown for this party or doing that and like you know that's when you know there's been ups and downs you know mm -hmm. being a hip hop artist a lot of people don't understand it's the, a lot of the work balance there is yeah. crazy it is no balance families on top of that yeah. you know because it, it, you can never really find the balance yeah. in real time like and it, it's that much sweeter when you start really living it you know for sure for I remember sure. we'd I'd bring him and I always find a way to bring him along but we'd go to like the Mix Show Power Summit in DR and I probably had $250 in my bank account but I'm in DR, the five-star resort, wilding out with the clips and papoose and all these people, like, just wilding out with $200 in my bank, but still making it work and getting back to New York and putting on the whole show. You know, you can't be out here on some pity party shit. Like, For I ain't sure. got money. Like, For sure. You got to act and look the part. But it's like, that shit was to getting to it when it's a reality you know it's not faking it till you make it either faking it till you make it is when you're straight front yeah, but yeah, making it happen and being in the spot is you know it's one thing to be in the party broke it's another to be fronting like wearing fake jewelry front, and right. all that shit we never did right. none of that right 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 that's some real shit that, right there that's, that's, <laughs> that's some real shit you know a, a lot of people think you just get into this shit and make money like, if you want a career in this shit, like, yeah, you can come in and get a quick bag. It's a lot of niggas that are just, you know, hey, take this, take your whole life and just, yeah. ah, go ahead. And when you take away all the, the, the circus behind it, you better have that skill to, to hold up. To hold up. Mm -hmm. Someone puts turntables in front of you and you don't show off, I don't respect you as a DJ. Same thing for an MC. If you can't get on the mic right now and spit something... I don't, I don't respect it. You're not a rapper for real. I don't care what car you got. Right. I don't care you're who not a your girl is. I don't care about none of that. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like that's how, that's how you in turn stay close because y'all both had the same drive. And he used to always, that whole time, the early, until probably about 2007, he'd be like, yo, your beats suck. <laughs> he just, he wouldn't rap on them. <laughs> I a and his whole first album and he didn't even put one of my beats on it. I got him like all that shit and he didn't even put me on it because you know what? They probably did. And it always held me to a certain... I was like, I got to get better. I got to get mm -hmm. better. And then when I did my first album, that's when everything changed. That mm. I like, I'm telling you, the day drama got arrested, it was a switch in my head. I was like, I got to take this shit serious right now. When did you con uh, conceptualize uh, Show Off Records? When did you? 2000, uh, as a label, I would say 2006. But before that, we were putting out 12 inches of remixes I was doing on my mixtapes. And I had Show Off Marketing. We did all G-Unit shit. Def Jam, Atlantic, Virgin, and like, I was running the Northeast with Street Team. Like, I had all the most accounts, and that was a whole different angle to it too. And I was also on 97 in Boston before I came to New York. So like, I was covering the game any way I could. Hmm. And the end game was to do what I'm doing now, but it was like I still wasn't taking production serious, and I should have been. But it was that day that I just that it clicked pivotal moment seemed mm. to be always in the right place too you got I was everywhere yeah. there wasn't nothing going on I wasn't at like from parties at 50's house to <laughs> open mics downtown in LDS like I was everywhere I'd go to 20 events a night with $200 in my pocket oh, that's the <laughs> <next> <laughs> <one>. negative oh, sometimes that's so I've gone on airplanes with negative $1,000 in my bank account like where they the IRS came in and took everything like I've been crazy shit and it's like Feels good to later, you know. Leave the benefit. Yeah. Yeah. The fucking sacrifice. It's the fucking sacrifice. All right, so you DJ for a lot of artists as well. And not just on some skid bitch shit. Like you were the artist DJ. DJ right. right. DJ. Now, it's it's one artist that I'm, I'm going to put on the side. And I'm going to dedicate my own little block of the time to, okay. to y'all. But who was the first, not even the first, 
what was the biggest who's the biggest artist that you dj for thus far nas um nas and q-tip i mean q-tip is my number one because he i had never had a passport stamp i think i went to jamaica i had one passport stamp hmm. and tip was like yo you're coming to japan when we we're in japan he was like you're coming to australia then we got back and we did i think 36 countries in europe in like two months like he brought me around the world within two months i had seen the whole world it was crazy that's so nuts. thank you q-tip he knows what he means to me like even if I didn't know him, he'd still be in my top producers and all that. Like, Tip is a monster. What does a Q-Tip show look like overseas? Word. Crazy. Crazy. Like, Pandemonium. Yeah. Like, we were doing, you know, 50,000 people a night at festivals and all that. Like, very good times, man. Hmm. Why, is he, why do you think hip-hop is bigger overseas than America? I wouldn't even say it's bigger, bigger but why the, do you think they take the, it? they come out more yeah, because yeah. not everybody's brother sister and cousin is a rapper so they look at especially americans like they come over there it's like yo this is the real deal you know what i mean like gotcha. it, it's like the superhero respect. system the way that we looked at these guys when we were kids now it's different think about it back in the day in like 1994 if someone was like i rap you'd be like oh shit let me hear you That's <laughs> now someone's like i rap you're like I hate rap. Get away from me. Like, everyone does it. And it it, water, it oversaturated the culture and everything. So it's like, you go to Europe, they're like, oh, shit, this is like... Picture watching a movie your whole life, and then Robert De Niro walks in your your town. Like, huh. what, what oversaturated rap, though? Everybody. Money? No. Just everybody wanting the girls and money. And, the lifestyle? And money was a big part the of it. You think money saturated rap? I mean, people seeing that they could get the a big opportun- The concept up, of the opportunity made a whole I mean. lot of people that didn't care about that's the music get into it. Like, I could just get a big check. That's all it is to make a song and get on. When I started to see I real think... drug dealers want to be rappers, that's when I Come knew on, it was changing. Because back in the day, the rappers would wish that they'd even... They they wanted to be like the drug dealers. Now there's like there's like a grip of actual rappers now that were real drug dealers. But bust it though, cause having a drug dealer POV, right? Just putting a mental like right. my mental in a drug dealer POV. Like if they rapping about my life and they rapping about me, and they're making money off of it, shit. No, I, w- I would be at, like, fuck I'm it, man. I'm not just saying that's when I seen the shift. I'm really living that's it. when I seen the shift though, mm. because now you have. Look at it now, like some of the. There's girl, like half the chart is girl rappers now that probably couldn't tell you who was in, I don't know, Wu Tang Clan. Exactly. And they're, Absolutely. Fucking, Absolutely. they're number one on the chart. Like, exactly. when we lost the culture, that's when things changed. Because mm. you had to grow up in it and really understand it. And now it's like, you don't have to know anything at all. You could sample anything you want. People, like, you nothing can tell matters. Somebody, write me a song. Like, write me. I don't yeah. like, like, nothing I matters. I mean, they, they've been doing shit like that. But hey, I, I, think, I think what saturated rap was. They made it too easy for people to get in. Yeah, I think um, we. I'm, I'm gonna say we because I'm talking about hip hop in general, but we let way too. We as in. A, as a culture, we like, let them in. We let them in, so <laughs> we can't be mad that we let them in. And then you know, a lot of this shit, this has no. I, I love certain mumble rap or whatever they want to call it. You know what I mean? But the skill for where I learned how to rap, right? That wouldn't. I wouldn't have accepted that. When I was 18 or 16 or 15. I'm worried about the kids, man. I'm worried. Yeah. Right. When I met Joey Badass, I know that's who you want you to know. You know that's who I, but when we I can met do him, that now. I was like, yo, there's a kid that's 16 years old that loves this shit. There's, there's hope for humanity. Like, and then I started going on tour with him, and I would meet 12 year olds, 13 year olds every night. Of Crying the week. over Joey Badass. I've never seen that in my life, though, yeah. because my whole life I've been rocking clubs. Like, I'm talking about. Even when I was out with Q-Tip and Nas or whoever, it's always adults. Like, they weren't 12-year-olds in the crowd, ever. So now I'm out there doing all-age shows with Mac Miller and Joey and all these kids, and I'm like, bro, the fact these kids are coming up to me talking about, you know, they're talking about term and talking about uh, all the shit I've done with whoever. I, there's too many people to name, but when they talk about that to me and they're like, yo, the shit with Cassidy and Saigon and this and that, it's like, bro, these are like, this is real like hope out here for hip hop. Mm. And then after Joey, it's like, I'm proud when I see um, a Corday mm-hmm. or when I see, I'm trying to think Corday. of the youngest doing it right now. Um, there's a 20 year old. I'm trying to, I just had this conversation. And I looked it up. There's like one 20 year old right now that's doing it. I'm trying to remember who it is. And he like, you can tell he loves hip hop. But besides mm. that, like I can't wait to hear the next 16 or 17 year old that loves this shit and wants to be great. Mm. You know, I like that kid. What's I think it's ah, oh, 
I don't want to fucking butcher his name. I think it's uh, it's Quay, the kid from Philly, man, the 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 oh, young kid, him. man. I'm LG. Quay. Is it LGP Quay? He's a kid. Uh, it's, it's yeah. He's a he's a young kid. But he's rapping. Rapping about the the rapper from Philly. Uh, L, I think it's LGP Quay. LGP, Quay, I think. Young kid from Philly. It's hip-hop shit? Hip-hop shit. Yeah. The kid could rap, rap. Yeah, I, I'm, on I, I, I'm like, already I like on it, man. I gotta lot. get on I that. like him a lot. But, you know, shout out to you for understanding that at that time. Because a lot of people didn't understand that shit. Yeah. They just looked at it and was just like, I look at DJ and produce in the same way, though. Like, I'm happy when I meet a young kid. Shout out to, like, my man Neff. He loves this shit. And it's, he's 10 years. He's more than 10 years younger than me. He's about 10 years, but the point is, is he's keeping that vibe going, and I don't see that from a lot. Like, I saw it with some of Pro Era, they were doing it, mm -hmm. and then after that, like, right now, if you ask me the youngest person doing it, I don't even know. Like, I want that them to carry their soul on. I know the kid Jay Versace's doing his thing with that sound, and he's a young kid. Mm -hmm. Shout out to him. Producer um, or just... Like when I met Derringer, I was like, "This is what I'm talking about." Mm -hmm. like the mm -hmm. next generation doing it, mm -hmm. adding cuts and doing this and that. Mm -hmm. It's like we need that. So, mm -hmm. another young MC I really like is Jay Grams. That's another shout, one. You know what? Shout out to Jay Grams. I mean, he, he's another uh, savant for rap. He we got. We got. I'm really strength. That's crazy. We might need to. We'll we'll talk about that later. But um, let's get into Joey Badass real fast because yeah. you know that's the person I put on the side that I wanted to just talk about that. Now you mentioned when you when you heard of him, your reaction. When when did you actually meet him? I met him at um at my house. In my house, <laughs> Shipe sent him over so I could do scratches on from the tombs on 1999. And um, when I was done doing the cuts, he's like, "Yo, good looking, man. I'll see you soon." I'm like, "Nah, bro, you ain't leaving here without hearing some beats." <laughs> he didn't. He like I didn't play him no beats yet. The first beat I threw on ended up being Don't Front. And CJ was there, too. And CJ, oh, wow. They did it in one take. Like, and that, that ended up on the tape. And um, from there on, I was like, Joey would just... I'd be watching a movie downstairs in my crib. Remember the old crib where we of did course, the Gibbs shit? I'd be chilling. And all of a sudden, I hear a noise. I think someone's breaking in. I grab a baseball bat, open the door. It's Joey and these kids climbing down the back of the wall. Like, they never came in through the door. They'd always climb over the wall. And I, these, it was just, <laughs> they'd be on their skateboards or bikes or whatever. And that became a regular thing where, like, me and Joey were just knocking out joints after joint after joint. Like, and it's still to this day, he pulled up last month. We knocked out five joints in one night. Like, it's just, it's always been the same vibe. No matter what he's doing or whatever I'm doing, like, that's my brother for real. That's my, like, me and Joey got a very special bond, so same, I appreciate same. it. Now I already, I already know. I already know. And that all just came from him needing a DJ. Like, Shipes was like, I want a real DJ. Bring him on. Because he was rapping on the vocals. I know he didn't want me to say that. These At kids the were rapping on the vocals in the beginning. Not, I mean, he was. that was just him just learning his foot. Now, I don't, I, it wasn't a long time that he did Because I that came in right, pretty much right quick. away. I, wasn't you on the first tour with us? Nah, I wasn't on the oh, first. He did one tour without me. The that Smokers was the Club. Smokers Club Then I that. came in on the Beast Coast. And from there on out, I rocked fit. Uh, six years, seven years, I think. No, eight years straight we rocked from 2012. About seven years straight. I'm talking about hundreds of show a year. Like every festival you could do from Coachella to shit in Croatia, London. We were in London like every week. We were, man, we were just on the road for seven years straight. His first overseas show, I remember him coming back being so excited. I remember seeing that shit on Instagram. You know what's funny? It looked. So me and Term got a show at the Splash Festival in Germany, and Action's supposed to go on. Is with that us. the shit that I was at? The shit? No, um, no, that's not Germany. Nah, you weren't there. That was the shit. In, it was in just Canada. Joey and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. CJ. Okay, okay, okay. So we're we're in Germany, and I'm expecting Action to walk in at any minute, and they're like, "Yo, Action canceled." I'm like, "Oh man." So I'm like, me and Term are like, "All right, whatever. Let's just go do our thing," and they're like, "Yeah, we replaced them with Joey Badass," and this is like, oh. Maybe two weeks after I did the first time he came to my crib. So this is my second time ever meeting him. <sighs> and we're in Germany together. And that's when I seen the stage show. I was like, yo, Shipes, let me, you know, we talked about it. And I came in and changed the whole way that we approach shows. And I thought it was going to be a temporary thing. That shit was a great run. It's not over. We got plenty more to do. But, you know, I stay off the road more than I used to now because baby girl at home, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, man, what a shout out to Joey, man. We had a very uh, historic run with that. Absolutely. It will continue. Absolutely. And we'd see you, like, 
randomly in Oslo or fucking <laughs> all over the place. Like it's the shit running into your friends overseas Bro. off a of rap. That's oh crazy. remember how we were talking about loving That's the crazy. culture and all that? That's the epitome of it. When you're chilling in fucking Amsterdam and you literally bump into your friend from home. On some hip hop oh, shit, like hip- you're there off of putting words and drum sounds and samples together. You know how crazy that is? Crazy, That's crazy, crazy. It's the yeah, shit. <laughs> Yo, I had the best. No, no, no. Look, I had the best I fucking the time. I feel like <laughs> I had the best time. I feel like I we, we, ah, it was somewhere in Canada. I, I don't know. Fuck. Oh yeah, yo, that's the- <laughs> you know what show I'm talking about, right? With the cr- crazy dude throwing the napkins and all that. Yes, I, it was me, you, Joey. It was Edmonton. Edmonton. So the Shout show out to was Edmonton. it was supposed to be Ghostface. Um, Sheik Luch. No, Sheik wasn't even on the bill, and they brought him out as like a Sheik be popping up with ghost places. Yeah, Technician. I remember that was the first time I you, seen it. It was you, Joey, Ghost, and te- uh, Sheik, and who else? Oh, Action. Action. Yes. How crazy was How that? crazy was... Bro. Yo, do you know how Action got home that day? I remember being like, oh, man, this is ill. Bro, he was supposed to be in the Derek Jeter the commercial. J- they sent him the they Michael sent the Jordan jet. jet. Yeah, they sent him the jet. The Canada yeah. get Action. I, yo, I was like, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Shout out to Bam Bam, my motherfucking... Wow. Bro. Speaking of Bam Bam, when did you meet Action Bronson? 2010. Um, my man Polly shouts Uncle Polly. Shout out to Uncle Polly. We were just at Max Fish playing pool, and he's like, Yo, my man, Action Bronson, look out for him. And the name's stuck in my head, but, you know, I hear people talk rap all day, so I'm like, yeah, whatever, your man, whatever. This is around Dr. Lecter So he's like, time. no, this is way before that. Before that came Dr. out after Lecter. me and Action already were rocking. Okay, okay, we did okay. our whole album before Dr. Lecter came out, and uh. then it dropped right after Lecter. Okay, 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 okay. But, nah, this is like, Action had 200 followers on Twitter. So I DM'd him, and well, what happened next is I saw the video for, uh, the first video he ever dropped, where he's in, like, the... He got like the prosciutto and all uh-huh, that. Uh-huh. Um, I forget the name of the record. But I hit him on the DM and I'm like, yo, come by the radio show, Shade 45. He's like, absolutely. So it was a snowstorm and me and Tarn were doing one of those live EPs. We had the live stream and all that. And I was like, yo, if you're around, come through. I never even met the dude. And he showed up in shorts and there was this much snow on the ground. He came Classic in shorts action. and sandals. Came in the crib, knocked out his verse, <laughs> and that day was the it was the first time he was ever on any website. But I had him. He went from zero to being on Rap Radar, Two Dope Boys. I had him because me and Turn posted that as one of the songs. Mm. With I'm talking about like an hour after <coughs> we did it. So like he like left my house and was like, holy shit, I'm on all these websites, and that was like the beginning of it. You know, he came through again, and I was like, let's just knock out a whole album, and then we did that album. That album to this day has like, man, like a hundred million streams or some shit. Like that album. That's a classic, man. Well done. We love... Those are good times, man. Because it was before anyone knew who he was. So there's no outside influences. Like, he was still coming through with Jay Love, Mayhem. Mm -hmm. Mayhem's been there, you know. They've known each other. The first time I ever seen Action Bronson, I want to say it was around 2010. He he wasn't as big as he was. I mean, now he's super small and super... He's fucking Nikolai Volkov. But... He was smaller than what he got. He was way smaller than what he got. And it was at this, it was this girl, her name is Nana Castro. Shout out to Nana Castro. She booked me, Mayhem, and I want to say ASAP Rocky, if, I, if I'm not, if I, I can't remember, but it was the spot named Fat Baby. Yeah. Right? It was uh, Rivington and, uh, Rivington, uh, exa- and Essex. Exactly. And Action came out with Mayhem. And that was when I first seen. I didn't know his name. I didn't know. But then fast forward seeing him. Again, Even I'm Mayhem. Like, oh. I remember him being just a dude that would roll around with um, Jay Love. Facts. And like, you know, it was it was cool. But like they found their shit after. They like found it in the niche, you know. Hmm. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Who, who, what's your favorite project you worked on? Out of all the projects you worked Man, on. I don't even know. Um, it might be Before the Money because that whole shit was done in my daughter's bedroom and she was on the way like her mom was pregnant we were just doing all this and then junior passed right when we were finishing the album it was like there's so many emotions with that album and Mm. getting it done yo there was a time where like it wasn't looking good like we were like we don't know if we're gonna finish it in time and um it was just an emotional time man and we knocked we finished it all in the crib and then my daughter was born right after, and it's like some of the some of the stuff Joey wrote in that time too. Like he would just take a walk in the other room and come back with like really dope shit, man. So it's just I think before the money was probably because we did some of it in my last crib, the, the old one, and then I moved, and it was like a whole new energy, and that's where we finished the album, and that's uh, Mr. Wonderful Action's first time. We did some shit there too for that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
I don't know. It was before the money is one of my favorite. Um, Trill Static is like that shit was just a moment. Moment. Um, got a lot of projects, man. The Freddie Gibbs right. one. The um, a lot. <laughs> it's hard <laughs> to even like, bro. I can't. I got like forty albums. I can't even think yeah, of. But as far as my albums, the, I'm on my tenth one now. So let's let's move to that because. Yeah. I just signed the new deal. Uh huh. It's the same deal as the last one, Mass Appeal, Rock Nation, all that. But it's like this one is not the middle of a pandemic. The last album, getting it was, was stressful, because nobody was going to no studios for a while. Nobody was in that zone. Everybody's being mad careful. Like I like to be in the studio, people. Right, right, right. So Mass Appeal, Rock Nation. Technically, you got Nas and Hov. Yeah. And then I'm also signed with Shade 45, you know, so technically and, I'm and you got Nas. Technically I got Nas, Hov, and M. And M on yeah. your side. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you produce a record for M? I did a couple. How, how are we going to get over that before we going to get into the 10th album and all that, right? Well, if we start but, going through everything I produce, that's a But nah, bro, we can't, it's fucking Eminem, bro. Yeah, Detroit versus everybody. Um, and my daughter is like a product of that. His was crazy. So... I moved to the new crib and my rent's way more than the last crib and I'm stressed out. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put my studio together. The first record I see is this record I had bought a while ago and it said Static on the Frequency. It was a Christian rock record. And the only reason I bought the record is because it went Static on the Frequency. I was going to use that on my radio show. So I was like, I'm going to start playing this to start my radio show off. And... Somebody was at my crib, I forget who, and I set my equipment up. This is the first day that I had everything set up. I put the record on, I sample it, and I make this quick beat with it, but the shit was kind of dope. So I'm like, I'm going to use this as the intro. I'm going to play the sample, and then I'm going to play the beat. I get to Shade 45 the same day, start the show with the sample. I go to play the beat, and I'm like, I never bounce the beat down. So I'm playing the sample, and I don't even have the beat. While I'm playing the sample, I let like the whole thing rock. I get a text from Paul Rosenberg. And he's like, yo, what the fuck is this you're playing? I'm like, it's like some shit I, you know, blah, blah, blah. He goes, you should make a beat with it. I go, I already did, bro. I forgot to bring it. He's like, send it to me. Don't play it for nobody. I sent it to him. The next day, he's like, don't give that beat to nobody. And the first thing I'm going to think of is Eminem. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm waiting and waiting. Probably a week goes by, and I'm at Primo studio, and Royce is in the other room. And shout out to my manager at the time, Fat Gary, that's family. Fat Gary's like, yo, Royce is in there rapping on your beat. But he's like, nobody can go in there because Big Sean's there or some shit. I was like, so Big Sean and Royce are on my beat? I'm like, that's weird. Like, I'm like, I wonder what beat it is. I didn't know what beat it was. Fast forward, you know, lawyers are hit me up and all that. And they're like, yo, you got a record on Eminem shit. And it's, fe- they didn't even tell me exactly who was on the song. But I was like, is Big Sean on it? They're like, we'll see. So that I knew he was on it. So I get to Miami. I'm on tour with Joey. We had a day off, and I ain't seen my girl in mad long. And we, you know, we had just lost a child. All this crazy shit. We were trying to get pr- pregnant, right? So I'm like, I'm on tour. I got one day off, and I'm like, I'm flying to Miami to beat the show in Miami. So I fly her down. We meet in Miami, and the second I land in Miami, my phone's blowing up. The track list had come out, and it said Detroit versus everybody featuring Big Sean. Uh, Danny Brown, Royce the Five Nine, Dej Loaf, Trick Trick, and I see the thing, Eminem featuring them, and I'm like, yes. So I'm like, we're celebrating tonight. That's the day I made my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Real shit. Yes, that. But um, yeah, man. Like, shout out to Shady. I'm very like extremely loyal to the Shady brand. Um, I've been rocking with them since even before I was on Shade Forty Five. I was doing street team and all that, so. That's crazy. And now I got a, I got another record with M two called Richard with Obi Trice. Fire. Yeah, man, that that one came first, but um, yeah, man, he's. I like how you just humbly said, "Yeah, I got another record with M that came up." Before. I mean, I got <laughs> man, it's. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yo, no, it's crazy though. Let's delete my whole catalog. Ready? I'm gonna talk my shit now. Yeah, so, this, that's, this what, that's what you're here for. Kicking in. Talk talk yeah, shit. man, give him, give him some more. Let's delete my whole discography right now. Uh-huh. What I'm gonna drop in the next 365 days is gonna, yeah, I ain't gonna be talking about shit. I don't wanna hear no other producer's name. Let's go. <laughs> yo, when I drop this album, two chains, scrap your top five album list. Scrap your top five rapper list. When I drop, I'm, I can't even say a lot of these. Nah. One of them is the biggest artist on the planet. I got a couple records with. The not hip hop. Not hip hop. Bigger than hip hop. 
Exhaust. Um, we're not doing the guessing game. Yeah, well, I, I, I got a record on Russ. He said it, so I can say it now. I got a record on Russ's album. Shout out to I love Russ featuring Bye. Lloyd Banks and Sai High the Prince. I got a record. I gotta be careful what I announce and what I don't. The two chain shit is gonna fuck everybody up. Everybody, like everybody. No matter what you think it sounds nah, like, I fuck with chains though. This is he his. Go. To me, this is like. This is his, it was written, a reasonable doubt. Like, this is, bro, this shit is, and the features, man, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> and I know I say that every time I do an interview, but now I was told a, a date, so oh, it's shit. coming. It's coming. And you, you left Probably the not pro- this year, but You it's left the project top. out that's coming out, too, in the next, not even Me months. and Diz are working on an album. Not, not only Me that. Me and Ransom are working on our second album. Well, the last one was in 2013. Mm. Look at Ransom. That's another one where I just saw the talent. At that time, he, he wasn't fucking with Budden no more. He wasn't fucking with Clue. And I just, I heard this one record by him, and I was like, he got to come to the show. We got in the lab, knocked out a whole album, The Proposal, which we're now putting out on vinyl, which I'm excited about. But Ransom's run right now, he might be the best rapper alive, bro. Phenomenal. Ransom is bodying phenomenal. shit right now. Phenomenal, phenomenal, Shout out, shout out to my nigga Randy. Ran- Ransom was there when I met Joey, too. Like, Ransom would be in the cut just watching, and it's funny to how everything went full circle, man. Fuck with Ransom, man. That that's that's ill. You know, it's another project that you that's in the can right now. Shout out to my brother Nemo. Nemo, that's, that's about to drop. That's the next album that's coming out. That's the next yeah. joint that's coming out, fully produced by yours truly. The big horse, Static you heard, man. with my brother, the big horse. Shout out. I to did the, the whole horse. album. Got some surprises on that. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? I got an album with Conway coming when we finish it up. I got an album with. Uh, let me th- I know I'm forgetting. Shout out to Nems. Me and Nems got a project. The Gorilla. Um, let me think. Me and Dave East are doing a project. Ooh. A lot of Harlem shit coming. A lot of Harlem, Harlem shit. shit. We, Harlem. we love you. Big Harlem. We love you. We love you out there. So me, and, me and Jim Jones like started to... to we got some stuff coming. Crazy. But hmm. we, we talking about something. Me and, me and at least two of the locks are dropping a project like separately. But... I've had actually I've had the conversation with all three of the locks. So I want to do I'm gonna just say this. This is what I want to do. I want to do like ten songs, three with Ghost, three with Sheik, three with Kiss, and then the tenth song be all three of them. Mm, That'd be a ill concept. That's hard. That's what I want to do. But either way, I got a lot of shit coming with the locks. That's family. Um, I got a Wu Tang record on my album that's fucking ridiculous. I got a record on Inspector Dex album. I got um. I got some new shit with Ghostface and Raekwon. I got, bro, I got so much shit coming. Nah, you always new you shit always with Nas. Shit. Like, I got so much shit coming, man. Shout out to Esco. Some un, some shit in the can with Westside. This crazy. A lot of sh- I got some shit with Rome Streets. I got a lot of shit. Just like I'm, I'm getting there. I had both both of them was here yesterday. So, um, congrats uh, to Rome for signing up to Griselda. Yeah. So I got some questions. You know what I mean? My chat is bubbling. They got a lot of questions. Somebody said, ask him what was his hardest album in terms of production to complete. Like, what challenged your ear the most? Um, Shout out to This Scott. last album was definitely the most difficult album to finish because we're in the middle of a pandemic. And, you know, just people weren't moving around like that. And you'd think the artists would be, like, in the booth spin more. Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of artists took a break during the pandemic. Hmm. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Mm. You think they took a break? I think a lot of artists weren't. And maybe... Uh, when I think of the pandemic, I'm talking about like March 15th to like May. Because after that, we were outside in New York. We were in the streets yeah. and all that. I'm talking about those couple months, like the world stopped for a second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think it was going to last as long as it's been. We're still not back in Shade 45. Mm-hmm. Like we do that shit from our Oh, it's still studio. remote? I heard next month, hopefully. Oh, wow. Finally opening So the that'll be when things feel normal. Yeah. But then, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that. I don't even want to get into that <laughs> other shit. But, um, you know, to go to your point, I feel like, at least for me, the pandemic made me go harder. Like, I, yeah. you know, after the first week or two, it's like, oh, okay, this is what it's going to be. I bet. Mm-hmm. Like, I adapted quick, figured it out, got my own studio shit. The pandemic was a very similar feeling to when the drama shit happened, because it was like... You had to figure it out. For DJs, it was like, guess what? No more gigs. All the gigs I lined up, canceled. South by Southwest, canceled. Right, right. All the festivals, canceled. Right. no shows. So for DJs... and. Uh, I'm very bl- I worked for don't get it twisted I worked for all of it but I'm very blessed that I can survive without having shit every night you know how many DJs in New York City get by gig to gig that were like fucked in the game and had to 
I know people that lost their minds, bro. That were just like, I'm, I've been DJing my whole life, and now I have zero income. Mm. It's like that shit fucked people up. Mm. Nah, it did. It did. I mean, it fucked people <laughs> up that that couldn't adjust. Yeah. Let's say that because you, you have know. to find a way to reinvent yourself or find mm-hmm. a, another angle. And anyone that has one hustle, anyway. I don't you care. You're one trick pony. Yeah, you, you deserve you deserve to not have yeah, nothing yeah. if you got it's one. It's a wake up call. You it's gotta have call. at least a couple. Yeah. At least. I mean, for us, like we lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in shows. I mean, from bro, the, you know what I mean? Like, just, just I lost at least. Let me think. From March to well, really, for even now, things are just starting to pick up. But like for at least a year and a half, no DJ gigs. Do the math. Even if that's I'm doing crazy. one gig a week, that's still. Like Whatever there's still is, thousands yeah. and thousands and thousands a month gone, and it's like thank God I produce and I have a label and I mm-hmm. find ways of getting money. Cause, sheesh, I can't imagine what it's like for a picture just a regular cat that gets two hundred dollars a night to DJ at a bar, and that's all he's been doing for twenty years, and they're just like no more bars, see you later. That shit's crazy. Fish out of water. Somebody asks, what advice do you have for any self-made artists that do it for the lyrics? <laughs> what was the last part? They do it what? For any self-made artists that do it for the lyrics stick to what you got into it for in the first place like don't lose that that feeling i'm not not the feeling because the feelings change but the goal it's like i feel like a lot of people got into it idolizing the you know that hip-hop shit and then they started to see i call it the drake effect man Mm. Look at Drake. He's like, I love Slum Village and fucking Little Brother. And then he blows up and he got more songs with Gucci Mane than he does with, you know. Mm, and that's okay. Good for his success. But I don't like it when there's not a balance there. Because that's not what you were about. You know what I mean? Like, stick to that shit you love. There's no reason that Drake can't throw Fonte on a hook, bro. It's wow. never even happened. Mm. I'm just saying, you know, the truth. When I met Drake, I, I thought he was going to be like, oh, what's up, bro? Peace. Dude was like, yo, I bump your shit in the gym, mad love, I love. I'm like, cool, can we get some can we get a song? Yeah. Like, I made a fake Drake record one time with a Tim Westwood freestyle. And he posted on his blog, on his blog. Oh, that's hot. And I was like, oh shit. Like he pays attention. Mm. The same way Hove is, Hove's watching everything. Oh, I know. The same way, you know, they're paying attention to hip hop, man. They love it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I just, you know, stick to what you love. And you don't you can do other things, that's fine, but always keep the, the element that you got started with in there somehow. Somehow. Keep the main thing the main thing. Last question from the congregation. Do you have another project coming with Spitter? Yeah. I actually was busting his balls, pause, because he was like, he, they, he he named all these albums he had coming on. I was like, oh, you, you didn't put my name. He's like, damn, my buzz, bro. I'll redo it. I'm like, nah, don't worry about it. But like, we got some more shit coming, man. Me and Spitter, it's, auto, it's autopilot. 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 Same way with me and Bun. Like, that yo, me and Bun's next shit. shit. Auto oh, check this out. You right? Ooh. That's hard. <laughs> hey, you know, I smoke this. Right? <laughs> yo, you ready for this? Too. You All ready right. for this? I'm ready. We're doing Trill Static 2 in LA. Oh, no. So, you can imagine the, the, oh, the, the artist. Yeah. And it's going to be fun, man. You might have to jump on a plane. I will. You know, I love the both of y'all. I'm there. First thing smoking, you let me know what's going one on. One of the I'm dopest moments of the last one was Quali was in LA watching. And he's like, yo, y'all are doing an album? Went to the airport, got on a flight, and we were still working when he landed in New York, and he came straight to the studio. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> crit, too. Crit, crit was in Atlanta while we, when we started the album, then he flew right up. Mm-hmm. I feel like I came in with Crit that day. Yeah, yep, yep. yep for the bun shit. That's, that's crazy. That's crazy. What's up? You want to shoot the five? Yeah, I got, I, got, I, got, I got a couple of names. All right, so we got this segment with show called Shoot the Five. He shoots you five names, and you give me the first thing that comes to mind when you hear I actually got names. about seven. You're a special dude. Let's go. Uh, Lucky shoot, seven. Shoot the uh, five. Cream. Goat. Nas. I would say goat again, but I'll come up with another one. Um, genius. Q-tip. Looking for the right word to... Um, Ma- uh, master craftsman. Those two words. Nah, that's all right. That's cool. You you can say a phrase. Terminology. Hustler. Mm, Joey Badass. Great mind. You're gonna end it all. Status selected. Dedicated. Dedicated. Oh, hold on. I got a couple joints for you. I got a couple joints for you. Big ear pop. Biggie. J and Oz. Come on, son. <laughs> I had Good to, answer. I had to try. Keep on pushing. What's happening? I had to try. <laughs> Winter, summer. 
Summer. Jada Kiss of Beanie Seagulls. Who won the battle? Keep it a bean. <sighs> From the bean, keep it a bean. I'm sorry. It's a hard one, man, because it was a great battle. And uh, I would say who won. I think in my eyes, Jada won the overall picture. Oh, the overall picture? The overall picture. Okay. I feel like, um, man, it's not fair. Uh, uh, <laughs> Shout out to Beans. You know, Beans knows I love him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fact. I, love, a fact. I love them both. Bad Boy and Death Row. Bad Boy. Production. Prem or RZA? Nah, nah, that's the one too. Uh, Prem all day, but RZA is like should be in my top five. Go with that. That's a good little the, the remix that you got. This is the remix <laughs> after after you shoot the five. Oh, that's what it's, that's I'm what it's fucking called. with that. Yeah, that's that's cool. I'm, I'm, I probably need to it. after you give them their that's names. That's when I don't give them the POW. You know what I'm saying? We got you know what I'm saying. That's when I don't do that. I gotta I gotta do a little spin on them. Now, that's really my friend. So I'm a, I'm gonna speak in codes. I'm not shitting on you. All right, I'm out to right. just to your benefit. So he got this other segment that he does. I know you know you, you see the show. You see our banter a lot. You don't have to partake because I never partake, right? That's why he skipped it. What is it? It's called porn star of the week. Oh, what do you mean? I'm the porn star king. This is why bro, I, you I know said what this. The fuck? I know bro, you're I've my friend. This is why I said it. I've had over a hundred porn so stars on my show. I was about to skip that. That's why I didn't let you skip it. Normally I, I do, dated but, porn I know, stars, but I know bro. him. Like, I've like so, oh, go ahead. Yeah, 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 oh wait, I hold on. Let me let me get hold on. Bro, I've done the AVNs. I've done all that. Yeah, look your little music. Your little music was just there. Hey yo, listen. Give me a porn star of the week. Porn star of the week. Yeah, give me a porn star. It, it could just get this we, nigga got a Pornhub porn subscription, bro. Week. So he knows. I everything. got all that shit, but I'm just saying. Uh, a Bella Anderson. She doesn't work no more though. She doesn't. But I fuck with that <laughs> ever. I never met her, man. I met all my favorites. I never met her. Who's your favorites? Can you give me top five? I'm sorry. I'm she's she's gotta... like top like three. Okay. Um, I'm gonna just shout out my friends, man. Shout yeah. out to Melanie Monroe, that's okay. family. Sarah J, that's family. Sarah J, like of course. Sarah J. Now Legend. here's here's Legend. why she's the illest. Legend. Not only does she she's a freak, right? But yo, she produces, directs all her own shit, owns it. She's yeah. like a she's a great business mind, man. Like mm. the way she does it. Lisa Ann too is like that. Shout out to Lisa Ann. Shout out to Dylan Ryder. Shout out to like these are like my friends. Like I've now he really these about are like, the brown knows you. He, huh? He, he really about the brown knows you now. He's so Nah, excited. these are people I can text me like, yo, I'm having a housewarming. Like, these are like, my, they're all cool people. Yo, they man. good people, yeah. though, right? People yeah. be shitting on And porn some of them, no, but check it out. Right? Now, some of, some of them, stars, some of them got the craziest stories that you're like, oh, that's why she's a porn star. Yeah. And then other ones, like Sarah J., Yo, she got a normal ass upbringing. Her parents are like churchgoers. Like everything's mad normal. She's she just, just a like fucking hustler. Yeah. I mean, oh, excuse me, excuse me. I, I, all due respect. No, Sarah she don't J. give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, she's like, <laughs> like suck down. I don't want to say. Shout out to Sarah J. She, she knows like, what it is. Dick, you know what I'm saying? That's my yeah, home. I don't go to Miami and not link with her. Like that's my. Yo, like, Sarah, check this out. That's my drinking part. I jerked off to you, maybe five hundred and fifty nine times. No bullshit. Bro, I have, one year. I have Sarah. I have Sarah and another girl with me and live, bro. People will be like, like, bro, fun that's times, Sarah man. Jane, that, she's though, a bro. legend, man. Mook said she owed her. You remember her? That's what Mook shouted oh, that's, out. Oh, yeah. That's what Mook shouted. She was already porn star. Murder, that's murder Mook said he owed she, 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 she just good people, job. man. That's a fact. Murder, murder, murder Mook said she owed him a blowjob because <laughs> some some shit. Did somebody won the finals. Some shit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. My, the heat when the heat uh yep yeah when yeah, the heat yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. with the porn I, no it's funny <laughs> it, you're not even gonna believe this obviously I watch porn but like not as much but as other be people I be meeting the porn stars on some social shit cause they come through the radio show or I'll be out and I get cool with them and I don't realize like how major they are until we're out somewhere and no, people they, are like this is what I'm saying cause like, not every porn star walks around dressed like a porn star a lot of them yeah, walk around mad normal on, they, shout they, to they uh, like Jelena Jensen like too she's a good friend of mine and she's incredible Shout out to her. But, um, man, like, they live normal lives, too, some of them. Sarah J will walk in the club looking like a porn star. She mm -hmm. knows what she's doing. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know, some of them would show up wearing hoodie and sweatpants, and nah, you Candace wouldn't even think Candace Vaughn is my homegirl, so yeah. she, she lives a yeah, normal people. life. She's shout out to, you know. Shout out to Candace Vaughn. It's the queen of the show. You know what I'm saying? I was the first porn star of the week. She kicked it off. Yeah, that's that's you know that's saying? family right there. But yo, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, we gonna tap in. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I did though when I when I had a, you know I got a little girl man when I had, when I first I had understand. my daughter I fell back a, a, like a lot, but 
I'm still friend. Like I still hang out with them and all that. Mm-hmm. I don't have them on the radio show as much. We haven't been live in mm-hmm. fucking forever. But when we get back live again, I'm Turn I'm, I'm a new man right now. New man. Nah, it's nothing. Like I'm not. Cause you was like raw with it, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's go. This is what I do. Nah, it's because people are corny, and a lot of them, their girls run their lives, so that's why they can't do it. Corny let's keep it a buck. A lot something? of y'all, yo, there's a lot of dudes yeah. out there. I feel bad for you. I'm not disrespecting you right now, but there's a lot of dudes out there that, like, if their girl even found out what they jerked off to, would probably be They'd single. Be Can I say something? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And I tell mine, and I'm jerking off next to my girl, like she waking up, <laughs> and I'm like, what? Go to sleep. Like, go back to sleep. Now I'm, look, I'm doing something. I'm, here. I, I might be, gu- I might be guilty. For that now nah, let me explain something yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You got so the so why i really don't care for porn like that like when you always say it i'm just like yeah like i'm really not into no it opinion, like that I'll, right? don't, I'll throw it on now i'm not gonna say i wasn't into it because once upon a time i might have been into it had to be right but you know once i had children yeah right and and you know i guess at one point in time my kid's mother might have ran my life a little bit right right and and I got porn shamed. Like I used to like like have to like sneak and do it. And I think one time she got on my computer and a tab was. Ah uh, yeah, it's it's a weird conversation it when like, it's not that it's not uh, where y'all at. Yeah. And then from then I just program my mind to not give a fuck about it. And then I just live my own life. Let's so, keep it a hundred real quick. Cause I was just thinking about this. Let's I keep it a buck. You know what's the porn? best in your player days, whenever that may be in your life. But when you're getting so much pussy that you don't even think about jerking off or that's porn. Real. I think no, that's no, where no, my life is. I'd say like real. 10 years ago, that's that, where that, I was that, at with it. And real. it was like, that's I'm trying to get back to it. But nah, yeah. listen, 10 years ago, <laughs> 10 years ago, man, I, there was like, I didn't even think about porn or yeah, none of that shit. Because you could call it. And call I was messing with half the porn stars I but just see, said, but that's yeah. a different story. <laughs> Let's go. I'm talking mayonnaise today. You talking man- mayonnaise? It's all good. Shit. I ain't been but single for years. I'm single as fuck. Let's go. I, th- I think that's where I'm at now. Like, I have no desire to why. I just, you know what I mean? I Whatever. But anyway. He get- Stat, you're a legend. Legend. Thank you. A man. saint as and you. a scholar. As you. You're another dude that reinvented himself so many times. And that's such a big thing in hip-hop, man. Like, to think about this. Like, a couple years ago, before Griselda, before all that, right? If someone was like, yo, this dude, you're going to meet this dude, Benny, and do a whole album of Pete Rock, your brain would have been like, what? Like, when we were coming up, like, let's say 2010, whatever, 2009, that whole concept sounds like half a million dollars or some shit. Absolutely. fucking And we earned it to the point where dudes like Pete and all them are all down. All the legends, I got, you know, having premiered be on my first album, talking on the intro, that's out of respect. That ain't. That ain't no like we didn't go through management to do that. Hmm. That's that's the ultimate respect, man. Is when your your heroes embrace your craft, not only co-sign it but like create with you. That's, that's the shit, bro. And I love you for that. And let me let me share something. When we did Trill Static, right? You know, I'm always a student when 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 I'm around the legends and I'm around you and everybody's creating. And you know, you put me on the record with Bun, right? Bun hit me. It was cool. Then I left. Then Fat Joe, that shit happened. I came back, and then I was just like, "Yo, I'm not I gonna lie. Believe I was I on the record. I never told you this. I never told you this. When we're playing them beat, the first beat I played him was the German Method Man, and I was like, if this is Fat Joe, Method Man, and Bun, that'd be crazy. I could tell the beat wasn't talking to him, and Method Man had already got on it. He killed it. Mm-hmm. So Joe didn't want to get on that. So played another one. Then I think it was the second one I played, and you start rapping. And I'm like, you know what? Joe's going to pass on this because I don't think him and Smoke have a relationship like that. Mm-hmm. And for him to just get on a record with someone that he don't know, I don't see Joe doing it. Mm-hmm. And I, he's like, who's that? I'm like, Smoke Dizzy. And he's like, yeah, this the one. And it was like, I didn't see that coming because Joe might have been like, yo, I want it to be just me and Bun mm-hmm. or me, Bun, and Raekwon or this or that. I thought he was going to be like really specific because he don't just jump on records mm-hmm. with, with mm-hmm. strength. Mm-hmm. You guys didn't know each other, right? Vaguely. Maybe here and there. Vaguely. But he was like, nah, this is the one. And Shout out to Joe. That's and he did the hook. And, and the hook is the hook. incredible. Oh, and, and, that's and it was right after Nip died. Facts. And he said, keep Nip in your heart. He is a basket. Basquiat. Come on, man. What are and we talking about? I think that's what made, that was what made him know me. I got me three unreleased Nipsey day. records I produced. That's oh. a whole different conversation. Come on, stop playing. He just said 300 Nipsey records? No, three, three unreleased. Oh, three three unreleased. unreleased. <sighs> you fucked me up. Uh, Cause I had another story with I had another little intel right there. Oh you my fuck, bad, my bad. You fucked me up with the Fat Joe shit up with the Fat Joe, and then you fucked me up with the Nipsey. Yeah, shit. you didn't know that. I didn't know that. 
Because you must have been like, wait, how did this even happen? Smoke wait. left. Let's keep it real. He pulled the Irish goodbye. That's what really happened. <laughs> and I was like, damn, smoke left. All right, cool. He did his thing. It's I all did. good. I didn't I feel did. it kind of way. <laughs> it was mad late. And I'm Westside left too. Westside went here. with him. They yeah. did the Irish we goodbye hungry. together. We was like, man, we get the they fuck dipped. out of here. And then I text Smoke like, yo, Fat Joe's here getting on the song you're on. All of a sudden, Smoke and Westside Gun show back up. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, look, <laughs> but look, I started thanking y'all like, yo, thank you, thank you. And, and Bun is like, nah, don't thank me. Like, you know, like you deserve to be on this. Like, you know what I mean? Like you, you work hard. You a good dude. And that was like full circle because I'm like, I'm with one of my favorite producers. I got two of my favorite Bro, artists. Bro, Bun that B, I look like, like the way Fat Come Joe on, is, man. Bun B is that for for hip hop for the South. Even though Facts. he's all hip hop, like specifically it. he's the Fat Joe Sneakers, of Houston. Abs- First time I met Bun B. 2009 South by Southwest. I went to introduce myself to him. He was like, nah, I know you already. He pulled out his iPod. Yep. And he had my songs on yep. it. And he was like, look, I'm listening to this. Blue. Bro, Bun is the Bun. most hip hop dude, man. Like, he's on top of everything coming out. He's good with all the legends. You never hear nobody in the, this shit ever say a bad word about him. Ever. That's ever, ever, ever. And someone finds a problem with everybody. Not Bun. Not Bun. Not bun, he's solid. You know, before it's one more thing before we get out of here. I, I want to ask, how did you link with Rock Nation? Oh, that's that's a that's a good one, man. I'm really shout out to my team, man. My team at Rock Nation is incredible. Um, what happened was the the classic lock strength champs. I was there for that. Like I just showed up to term was like, oh, they're doing it. And, you know, a lot of people don't know. Me and Nori like took the Drink Champs name. He he obviously came up with the name Drink Champs, but we turned into like a lifestyle. Like we've been in the room with Jay and Beyonce and Khaled and all these people, and me and Nori are mixing Moet and vodka, like Drink Champs, like doing dumbass shit. That's how it all really started getting crazy. Then he started the podcast and started calling it Drink Champs years later. So with Drink Champs, I was around from the beginning. Like I've been at least 20 episodes. Some of my talks, some of my didn't. But at the Locks one, we're just there chilling. And um, shout out to Christy Clifford. I see her, and, you know, she she tells me, she's like, so-and-so brought your name up in a meeting the other day. We know who so-and-so is. I mm-hmm. was like, oh, shit, word? She's like, why was he? He said, why isn't he on the Locks album? And she's like, he is. And I had it was the record. The Locks just dropped an album recently. The song I did on there was on it years ago. And, um, you know, she's like, you know, he is. So when I seen her, she told me the story. And she's like, who's managing you? And I'm like, at the time, shout out to Fat Gary. Gary was, you know, had his shout hands in different things. <clears throat> so at the time, I was like, you know, Gary's not that active in my, in my career right now. So I was like, you know, I'm open to conversations. She's like, yo, come up to The Rock. I go up there. I play. This is how long me and 2 Chain's been cooking. This is 2017. Maybe 2000. Yeah, 2017. I start playing some of the 2 Chain's records. Ty Ty comes in the room, starts flipping out. Like, people are going crazy. Like, I'm telling you, when people hear these records, so they were like, yo, we want to sign you, blah, blah, blah. So I signed a Rock Nation in, like, um, I think June 2017. And then, you know, it was when you're signed around that many amazing artists, it's, you know, sometimes it's hard to get prioritized or whatever. So one thing led to another, and now my man Freaky Yayo is my manager there. Christy went on to, she still manages a lot of greats, but now my man Freaky is my main manager there. Shout out to Mike Brinkley and Hank and the whole team. But now the way I'm embraced there is like, I, it's almost like I signed again. And the, the way that things are moving in Rock Nation now is incredible. They're bringing, you know, when I dropped the last album, the way they combined with Mass Appeal to, we were like number three on the chart. We were, everything came together amazing. So shout out to my team up there. I feel like, I literally feel like a new artist. Last year when I went to the Grammy weekend in LA, um, I went up to my meeting. It was my first time at the. It was the West Coast office was new. The the one they were in, it was like brand new, same building as Sirius Satellite. So it was my birthday. I was doing my radio show in LA in Sirius, and Rock was upstairs. So I was going back and forth. The vibe, like I had all these meetings with new agents. Everything was coming together incredibly. Kobe Bryant dies, mm. the day after the Rock Nation brunch, and bro, I literally like everything changed, dude. Like. It was like, and then COVID was like kind of like a, mm-hmm. like a rumor mm-hmm. in the air. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I feel like the minute Kobe died, just life was never the same, man. Yo, it's facts. crazy. It's a fact. And, you know, being in L.A. for it and just like, it was insane, man. And, you know, after that, it was just like, I can't even tell the story I want to tell, but it's, uh, 
anyway, t- to answer the Rock Nation, I feel like a new artist up there. Like I, the way I've been getting, it, shout out to them, man. They're really incredible company. That's dope. That's dope. I love hearing shit like that, man. It, it, it <clears throat> we'll get to that in a later day, but I love hearing that. That's good. You know what I mean? It, and Mass Appeal too. Me like hope. so important to to hip hop. With mm-hmm. shout out to Peter and Annie and the whole team. But Nas being, you know. Hands the face of it there. and he's so really involved in all mm-hmm. the projects there mm-hmm. and um you know they're doing global they're doing crazy shit all around the world they got like the biggest rapper in india they got like all this craziness going on between the movies they did the wu-tang documentary mm-hmm. they got so much shit going on so shout out to mass appeal this next run is going to be my 10th album like this one is a one for the books man. when is that shit dropping top of the year top of the year top of the year all right well my eyes is peeled we got our thing coming, you know what I mean? Stay I got a session right now, man. I'm not yeah, and I, I got, yeah, and I got a fucking meeting right now. They waiting for me on a, on a uh, video meet. But, yo, Static. Follow me on Twitch, man. Static Select. Follow me on, t- on Twitch, Static Select. Where else? Instagram, Twitter. Instagram, it's sta- at Static Select across the board. S-T-A-T-I-K-S-E-L-E-K-T. You know what I mean? The great Static Selector. Love, man. Appreciate you. What's that stupid shit you're saying? Yo. yo. Oh no no no! I was gonna no, say, no, no. stay on him. Like, leave him comments to finish his fucking album. He got the beats. The only person holding up is him now. Nah, it's me. And I'm watch gonna, how we drop it. Now watch. I'm gonna do my ver- I'm gonna do the songs, the album, in front of you guys, like okay. I normally do. Cause you That's know, hard. I'm hibachi. I'm gonna sit here. Anytime I record, I turn on Twitch. I don't care what's going on. My community, the congregation, is gonna arrive at the Kush God for the sermons. So I'm gonna do that in front of them, and they'll tell you. I won't even text okay. you. They'll tell you. Yeah, keep me updated because yeah, smoke, Smoke's me. not gonna. So y'all can keep me <laughs> they, updated. They're gonna keep you updated because they know I'm on here. What's that stupid Lord, shit you say? Yeah, nah, y'all yeah, good. Curls for the girls, ways for the bays, nats for the hit rats. We got Static Selector, Show Broadway, Smoke. There's a personal party podcast. Chill. <laughs>